Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 12 of our Let's Play. If you missed the beginning, episode 1, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to that episode. Highly recommend it. I feel like I go over a lot of the beginning of the campaign and it should really help you if you're a little bit stuck in that regard. Right now, it is spring finally, so we are we are out of the horrible winter and we can finally go on the offensive again without taking some rather absurd amount of casualties. I am moving forces about. We are going to push up from Fort Frederick and take Fort St. John's in Burlington. See, I don't really want to take Fort St. Uh, Fort St. Chambly. I just kind of want to take Montreal. Ooh, they have a lot of men up here. And then maybe Quebec and then give them back. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. But I really want to shore up New York and take Fort St. John's in Burlington because we do have some issues there. I am building up more forces as uh, I do expect a rather large British invasion to come soon. We haven't had a British invasion yet, so I built two more militia units there. We're both, we are building up some some fusiliers here and we're, we're down on officers. So we'll build up those fusiliers, probably build maybe two more, uh, two more militia after that. And all of our militia, they have U.S. muskets. All of our fusiliers, I believe, have either Brown Besses or the Virginia muskets. And I think uh, I think this force is ready to go on the attack. So um, once again, really hard to... Can I not grab you? No. Okay. I'd really like these guys to brigade up. There we go. That's what I was looking for. They need a they need a better way to brigade up over here. Somebody in the comments, I'm really sorry, I forget who it was. Uh, let me know that I can just draw the unit across Lake George and they will go there as opposed to going all the way around. That would have saved me earlier in the campaign and that would have been really good. Why don't you guys brigade when I ask you to? Army management. There are there are things in this game that I will always harp on. Uh, not because I dislike the game, but because I love the game that much and I want the game to be really good and really successful. And army management is something that they absolutely have to work on in this game. So British mobilization in Quebec. The British are sending reinforcements to uh, protect the province of Quebec. Commanded by General Bourillon. It is rumored that they consist of Hessian and Indian mercenaries. But Indian mercenaries are not in the game yet as far as I understand. They should be maybe in the next update. But they are not there yet. Uh, there's there's a little bit of discourse on that in the, in the official Discord. Um, they, they showed off the Native Americans using bow and arrows, and uh, I, I hope the devs kind of take that seriously. From everything I've read, the, the Native Americans didn't really use bow and arrows anymore, mainly just for hunting, uh, but for warfare. They, they traded a lot for muskets, and they apparently were very proficient with muskets. We've lost a lot of men to desertion here, even though it's spring. That is something I would like the game to work on, too. If I have the provisions and the ammunition, I'd like the desertion rates to go down a lot. Um, feels like they are they are pretty rough, uh, if I do say so myself. So we should start with a battle for Fort St. John's pretty soon. Um, we are taking a massive amount of casualties just walking across the map. And I don't know... Come on, I told you to move up. Would like you to engage Fort St. John's, and I would like this battle to start. Okay, I need you to move up. There we go. Uh, I don't necessarily want you to be... Three artillery? What on earth? Holy cow. Uh, I have been informed that this is a bug, and this should be fixed hopefully soon. Um, you're only allowed one artillery per regiment, and this makes that regiment so much more powerful than it should be. Looks like our reinforcements have finally arrived. I was actually pretty quick. I don't... Sometimes the reinforcement stuff's a little bit weird. Wow, they are shooting at us already. I don't understand how they have line of sight to us, but we don't have line of sight to them. Um, that's always something in the Ultimate General games that I wish they would work on a little bit more, especially cannons. Like, I should be able to see a fort. <laughs> I, I should be able to see what is what is in a fort. Uh, Benedict Arnold moving up. So we're moving over here because I believe the artillery for the enemy is placed more on this side over here. So let's, uh, let's just get the move on. Yeah, their artillery is shooting pretty... Okay, so there's one there. 
Okay, they're they're on the inner circle. That's not great, but we'll we'll try to take care of it. Okay, actually, seeing how they are deployed, that's a little bit different than I expected. So let's move you guys up over here, and then let's move you guys up over here. And then let's just get some men moving up, and then we'll have you guys moving up over here, and then we need a reserve of men in the center. That is that is our plan, Benedict Arnold. You do your thing. I don't know, our supply wagons will be probably really, really slow. That's, uh, that's how they go. And then you'll go in the center. You'll go over here. That artillery looks, uh, pretty, pretty beefy. So we'll just try to probe the enemy. They should only have three regulars, and then they have the three artillery. Three artillery, as I said, shouldn't really happen for an enemy that only has one regiment, but seems to be a, a little weird bug in the game that they haven't quite, quite fixed. So let's, let's actually move you guys out over here, and then let's move you guys up. Let's move you up, and this artillery is not quite where I want it to be. I would like you to be over here, move you up over here, and then just keep keep on moving up. We need Benedict Arnold supporting, and then you guys over here. I don't have any skirmishers in this in this battle, which is a little rough, but we'll we'll handle it. Um, I feel like we'll need we'll need guys in the center over here. And then you guys will just absolutely need to to position yourself properly. So let's get you guys moving up. Let's put you guys on hold. Let's grab you guys, shift you up. A nice, a nice flanking position. The British are destroying their own fort, which is wonderful. Uh, forts seem to have really terrible, terrible angles for the artillery to shoot at. What is? Oh, that's our. Uh, of course it's artillery. They have a mortar regiment in there. So that was what you saw going up and over. That is that is what you can see over there. They are shooting, arcing over. I hear that the mortars are the best thing for fort battles as they arc over. You can see that cannon over there. Not doing a good job shooting us. It's hitting this tower. It's hitting friendly men. Something I would really like them to work on the game. Um, and I, I would like to reiterate, I say a lot of times this is something I would like them to work on in the game. That is not a, a negative, unless it's something that they don't work on. I, I, I very much want this game to succeed, and in order to succeed, I think you have to understand what is working, what is not working, and you have to act accordingly to that. You can't just be content with mediocre gameplay you have to you have to be okay with going okay this is not working now that doesn't mean scrap the entire game but there are instances with games where they've changed their ideas those are hessians i believe that's cool to see i didn't realize that they would have hessians um are they firing great shot or no i don't i don't necessarily know let's move you guys up somebody surrendered get them out of there we have badly damaged that unit, which is fantastic. Let's move you guys up. Let's move you guys up over here. And then the British are retreating. So this is time where we need to be very aggressive in grabbing their artillery and grabbing their infantry. And hopefully we can we can do this. Uh, actually, oh man, that was, I was just about to turn, <laughs> stop the cannons from firing, because I was about to say, uh, we're probably at the point where we're about to take friendly fire. Um, so hopefully we can shatter, capture, I don't know how those guys got through, but the cannons are the most important part. We, we absolutely need to get the cannons to surrender. Um, they should be routing, that unit is not routing, unfortunately. And that seems to be something that happens quite often. They just surrendered, and then they unsurrendered feature of the of the game at the moment, and we're causing a lot of friendly fire. All right, 
that should be that. Let's go to the global map and 138. I will take that, especially for them having all those cannons. I mean, we outnumbered them by a boatload, but fort battles, especially with militia, can always be a little iffy. All right, sea invasion. There we go. I was talking about it. We're we're expecting a sea invasion. So the captain has been following the enemy from distance and for a couple days now. From the course of the fleet and the existence of troops, our captain assumes that the Redcoats are planning a sea invasion at Fort George. Now, Fort George is up here. I am perfectly fine with them moving their forces up to Fort George. It's when they when they move their forces back here. Now, some people intercept sea invasions with their fleets. Our fleet is badly damaged. I'm, I can't remember what happened at the end. I think uh, I think we engaged an enemy, a uh, large enemy fleet at the very end of the last last one but um our, our plan now is fort st john and let's try and mop up these 91 soldiers see if we can see if we can get them to surrender would be really nice doesn't look like they are surrendering where are they going they are going down to burlington so that's let's just let them go away and we'll take fort st john's that's that's fine we could probably yeah, be really sneaky and grab Montreal real quick and then just get the capture Montreal bonus. We could also be really sneaky and move like Benedict Arnold around, have Von Steuben kind of protect over here. That's also a possibility. I did want to move these guys up to Fort Frederick and I did want to move these guys to Ticonderoga and then I wanted to move one more unit which was not the guys with skirmishers over to Hubbardton and then those guys will sit there and then we'll we'll grab more more guys eventually so we have to be careful 6800 men 50 of that the, the 50 part will be the general let's grab you guys join garrison join garrison and then Benedict Arnold um, you just need to look out okay so they they reinforced Montreal that makes a lot of sense so we have Fort St. John's maybe what we'll do here Ooh, where are they going they're not reinforcing Montreal, so that's interesting. Uh, but what we can do, hopefully, is control Fort St. John and then maybe move out forces. Why are you guys... Okay. Yep, yep. Okay, that's working out. And then maybe move up two guys up and take Burlington real quick, because, as I said, we want Fort St. John and we want Burlington because... Those are part of the colony management of New York. Actually, New York is now good. So we really don't even need Burlington, which is interesting. I really wanted that doctrine, and we're at 50% capacity, which is no bueno. So let's do mining, because New York is really good for, for mining there. We have tons of resources now. Let's go take a look at construction management. I've been building factories where I can. You can see over here, lots of factories. Kind of would like more mining in New York, possibly, or more factories. That is also a possibility. Right there in New York would be a good idea, or down here. Um, Actually, I think uh, I would really like mining here again. I feel like New York can be a really good mining place, and that because that's a lot of resources. That's three different resources, and mining that out sounds like a really, really good idea. Let's make sure the battle, or the, uh, the map is still going and then as i said would be nice to we probably need to shift these guys up because there is a large force that just dropped in port st george and we can see that over there wealth of the nation so what is this minus 10 something really weird scottish economist adam smith publishes the wealth of nations in london offering one of the world's first collected descriptions of what builds nations wealth and touch Touching upon such broad topics as division of labor, productivity, and free market. So I have no idea what this means. Minus 10% resource underscore self-cost for 90 days. Uh, yeah, no, no idea what that means. Um, devs, if you ever watch this, you need to fix your descriptions on stuff. I understand localization is one of the last things you do in the game, but that, that makes zero sense of what's going on. Okay, I did a little cleanup. I did sell a ship and... Just kind of monitoring what the British are doing over here. They, they of course, <laughs> you know, nearly, nearly 7,000 troops just dropped over there. So I am moving troops up into Portsmouth. I am moving newly recruited troops up over to Salem just so we can bolster 
that that side over here um they're going to fort lavelle and over here i'm contemplating I, I kind of have a low loyalty in fort ticonderoga and you can't build a printing press so i'm not really sure what the best way to go about this and by the way the reason i have 2.2 construction points is because i am funding construction with an officer uh, because i really wanted to start building up new york but over here i don't know if the british are just content on you know securing their north which i'm perfectly fine with if they want to do that that is that would be wonderful to me i would like to grab burlington just because it's the last place in new york okay there we go that is kind of what i was thinking would happen over here so why did you guys not move up this happens a lot where i tell somebody to move up and they don't and i am not really sure why they don't don't move up so we're going to have a battle. The 500th battle of Portsmouth is going to happen. Uh, this is just like a monthly, bi-weekly occurrence. I feel like, uh, what do they have? They do not have many men. So I am, I'm really good with this. And what I really want to happen is I would like these guys to, to join the garrison. And I would like you to join the garrison. And then we'll just go ahead and crush over there. I am a little worried about that front. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take this battle. This should be an overwhelming victory on our part. If the British want to keep sending the small little forces to Salem, I'm perfectly fine with that. Salem uh, right now is kind of like our frontier territory that we have to protect at all costs because it's the gateway down into the rest of Massachusetts. This is the first time it looks like our army is actually deployed in a semi-reasonable way. Okay, moving forces out on the battlefield. Not a terrible deployment zone. Would like my cannons a little bit more spread out. Uh, the British generally just roll forward. I imagine this is a mass retreat on their part. So I will I will set up, see if they're going to retreat, and I'm going to start curving out my lines. Because the more I can capture of their men, the better. Just have to just have to get there. Um, always always the tough part of the beginning of the battle. I think it was, oh, I'm trying to remember the, the, the name of the person on Discord. Was it Malik? Um, he made a Discord meme using that, like, Bernie Sanders uh, template where it's like, I am once again asking you for deployment zones because that feels like, you know, every single time I start a battle, I am once again asking for deployment zones. And that'll probably be... Uh, you know, until they give us a better way to deploy on the battlefield. So over here, it looks like the British are are moving out. The British are... The AI is pretty interesting when it comes to how they deploy against me. Usually, it's they start attacking the center. The center doesn't work. So then they start probing the flanks. Sometimes they, they attack the flanks earlier than other times. Um... So I always recommend don't put all your cannons in the very center. I've done that before and it doesn't quite work. You you need to spread your cannons out a little bit. Otherwise, the British will kind of overload the area where you have no cannons whatsoever. So let's put more guys on hold now that they are in position. And then let's really, really push up this flank. I would really like that to happen. We actually are lacking men over here, which is not a good thing. Let's, let's try to solve that problem. And then over here, we've got two guys in the center. Quicksilver, you're doing well. Over here, it looks like we've overloaded <laughs> this flank maybe a little bit too much. Uh, so we could probably rectify that just a little bit smooth. Say like you guys over here, and then you guys can move out over onto this flank. I'd feel a little bit better about that. That's uh try and get these these Minutemen up. I'm actually pronouncing it correctly for once. <laughs> Pronunciation is not always my my greatest strong suit. You guys probably have figured that out by now, but uh, yeah, not, not my greatest strong suit. And then let's move up. I'll blame it on uh, having English parents and then growing up in the American public education system. Is that a good, good, um, way to explain why my pronunciation is terrible. So I, I know half of one language and half of another. That's, uh, oh, there's a cannon out over there. I wonder if we can go and grab that. I think it's a mortar. Wow, those, uh, 
Those Minutemen are actually taking way more casualties than I would like them to. Let's move you guys up over here. And then... Man, what is... Oh, they're... Well, they have cannons over there. There's something... Or maybe it was the mortar. Maybe... Do they have a mortar unit? There it is. There's a mortar unit over there. All right, routing. Perfect. Let's go and grab their artillery. That is always the number one priority. Let's have the artillery. Well, I'd like to say stop shooting, but the enemy is like right in front of your face. Maybe one, one shot. Yeah, you got it off in time. Perfect. Okay. Who surrendered? Somebody surrendered. I don't know. Can't tell who surrendered. Let's continue moving up over here. Let's have you guys stop shooting. Oh, you guys surrendered right there. Okay, there's another surrender. Perfect. Can you guys go grab these guys? Can you grab them? Are they going to unsurrender because a uh, routing unit? Oh, they didn't. Perfect. I'm always always like the routing units shouldn't cause the enemy to to come back ever. Can you guys charge the the mortars over there? Because that would be great. This unit here looks like it's not really going away. I should speed up through this stuff. Um, I always forget to use the the two times speed. It's definitely a weakness of mine. I try to get better at that the more campaigns I do, but obviously it doesn't always work out that way. Some of the British are not retreating anymore and that's an opportunity for us to really really grab more and more units as as the battle continues and i will i will take that every time because the british can be quite annoying so i think there's only one more unit we can truly grab and i think that other unit yeah they got away so that was pretty good 40 i don't think 42 is correct I feel like we lost more than 42 just in our Minutemen. This is the 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 casualties look like they're not not doing great. Let's see, captured. I mean, they dealt 30 and they dealt 18, so that's 48. And it says we only lost 42. So once again, that's that uh, revolutionary math, not not quite good math. So I have these two units try and chase them down, and then yeah, we can have the. The skirmishers try and chase them down too. That was one surrender. That's good. Um, not not a full full surrender, but we could definitely. Oh yeah, another one surrendered. Perfect. As I said, I from what I understand from the Discord, listening to people like Panda Kraut and the like, um, who Panda Kraut now is sort of a contractor, from what I what I understand for for the dev team is that the more surrenders you create on the tactical map, the more likely it is for the enemy to surrender on the strategic map. The tactical map being the battlefield, and the strategic map being this, the, the campaign map. Okay, Halifax Resolves. The North Carolina Provisional Congress adopts a Halifax Resolves, encouraging delegates to the Continental Congress from all the colonies to finally push for independence. This is the first official action in the colonies calling for independence from Great Britain, Plus 20 recruits for 30 days in New Hampshire. So we're not really struggling with recruits, but you know, I'll, I'll always take um always take it. These guys have stopped moving to Salem because a battle just happened. One of my one thing that they, they absolutely need to fix. So over here, I need to figure out what to do. I don't want to lose Fort St. John's, but Fort St. Chambly has nearly 3,000 men in it. What kind of men are these? It's a bunch of militia. That's really tempting. Really tempting. I feel like it, we could probably move up from Hubbardton. I would like another unit over there, though. And I'm just really worried about moving these guys out in New York because New York is kind of not doing the greatest um, in terms of loyalty. So I feel like if I moved you guys to Hubbardton and then one unit over... Well, we could move one unit over to Hubbardton, and then I would like another unit at Fort Lavelle. I'm just really worried about Fort Lavelle. I have no officers, though, and I think I'm going to rectify that. I think I'm finally going to recruit some low-rank officers because we're starting to go on the offensive here. And let's just have uh, you guys, just in case I forget. And that's perfect. It's near the end of the day. Oop, uh, uh, there we go. 
and I'm going to rush it over here. I would also like more officers, but uh, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, it's always a it's always a toss up. Let's do let's grab these officers. Why not? Oh, it has to be your project. That's unfortunate. And then you know, seventy six minus nine. What will the magic number be? Sixty. Wow. It, no, no, seventy six minus nine would be sixty seven. Yeah, revolutionary math. Interesting. As I said before, I think it's because your your general probably provides some benefits. I didn't realize Quicksilver is a hundred in everything. Holy cow. He's a uh, he's going boss mode over here. Oh, I forgot to rename. Uh, I wanted to rename our first rate ship uh, to the most American thing I could think of, which is USS America. But you have to say it USS America, like Team America or something like that. So it's really apostrophe M E R I C A. Uh, that that's the proper way to say it. It's not, but that's. I feel like that needs to be a thing where we just say America, because <laughs> why not? Just make it as ridiculous as we can. So that day's about to pop. I really want to make sure I get back onto my projects without wasting time because sometimes I'm really bad about that. What was I doing over here? Good. And then over here, you were working on qualified engineers. So that gives us a bunch of officers. We immediately gobbled up a bunch of them. Holy cow. Okay. So this is what the British are doing. Instead of sending 7,000 troops down, they are sending, you know, a handful at a time. We still have our regulars in Portsmouth, so I'm not really worried. So let's, uh, let's just move Quicksilver back down below Portsmouth. And actually, I would like... Uh, we'll, we'll just wait for the, the battle to pop up immediately. Just need Quicksilver to get over here. And we'll just continue uh, bleeding out the British. This seems to be working really, really well. This time they sent three full... Uh, almost three full regiments. And we're, we're nearly four full regiments, so we have the advantage. Uh, let's take the... I don't know, what, what number... Is this at Portsmouth? I feel like there must be a like giant cemetery out of Portsmouth and it is just filled with British redcoats because we, we want to be respectful to them, you know, let them bury their dead. And then there's like a smaller cemetery, more glorious, right? It's It's got like American flags, which would just be, I mean, it's not even like the 13 colonies at this point, right? Uh, I mean, there there are the 13 colonies, but I don't even know if they had 13 stars on their flag at the time of the American Revolution. I need to look that up. But, you know, just like as, as American as you can get of a cemetery, then there's this like gloomy dark one over in the corner that's a little overcrowded and it's all of the British redcoats. Once again on the battlefield, once again asking for deployment zones like good old uh, the Bernie Sanders meme. Th this one's not too bad, but it's just a it's a little silly that I have to really deploy my men. So in this case, there are three artillery pieces all stuck together. I would really like the artillery pieces to be like with their regiment. And I would like the regiments to not be like crazy far forward. In this case, they were not crazy far forward. So as I said, this battle better, better than most, but still, still has the issues of where you're like, ah, oh, it's, I, I spend a, a couple minutes at the very beginning pausing and maneuvering all the men into place. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And I feel like it's the exact same thing you would do with a deployment zone, except just not as good. Because it's not as good. Like, our artillery is not in place. It's walking across the line, which is not what you want the artillery to do whatsoever. And then over here, let's just grab you guys, pull you over here. Um... And then this over here, over here, you guys can be a little bit more supportive over here, Quicksilver. And then there we go. We have a nice, what I call like a revolutionary war deployment. You've got sort of your stacked ranks. Um, that's not the correct way to put it. You have, a, you have a defense in depth. I guess that's the best way to put it. I don't really like the British pushing out on my flank over here. I do like that the AI tries to push your flanks, but it does become this thing where sometimes the center it gets a little long and 
the flank becomes a little weird. And I always refuse my flank a little. I wish I had... I, I would really like to, to make my army better, in a sense, or more well-rounded. I, I would like three-pound galloper guns from Militia more. And I wish there was a way for me to identify them a little bit better. Uh, obviously, it's probably their uniform. But, like, rushing a three-pound galloper gun over to this flank would be perfect because the Redcoats, you know, they're they're pushing forward. And I, I would, like, ooh, they are getting beat up. I would like to have an answer to that, and galloper guns are fairly quick. I think you guys need to become friends. Rear flanked, really? And what are they rear flanked from? There's nothing that's hitting these guys. Okay, we're just going to retreat them. They're bugged. I've had this before, and it's really obnoxious. And it's been reported a few times on the Discord. So if you get that rear flank bug, make sure you report it. I need to... I should, like, pause the video and report, but I don't really want to pause a YouTube video and to, to report something like that. So we're just doing a quick repositioning, although, of course, I say quick, and I can't grab my guys properly. So let's... Let's move you guys out. You guys will go out on that flank. And then let's grab you guys. You'll be over here, over here. Are the British charging? This looks like a charging coming. Let's put you guys back in the center. Fire some grape shot, please. That would be wonderful. If you guys could actually move out on this flank. I don't know where they're... Oh, there's their skirmishers. That's interesting. Okay. And looks like they have charged in. So let's charge them back. Please do not fire grape shot into your own men. That is not what I want you to do. They, they are routing. Somebody surrendered, and then they surrendered back immediately. Unfortunate. Okay, you guys need to get out of there. Perfect. Surrendered. Uh, Billy Bailey. What a name. Billy Bailey. I love that name. Okay. There are skirmishers in our back door. I told you guys to retreat. I am pressing the F key, and they're not... They are not cooperating. Need to grab all of you guys, put you on hold. And then grab you guys, put you back into that hole right there. And that's a lot of what I do is I just fill up the holes. Um, that's not dating advice. That's... Well, maybe it is dating advice. Uh, I'm talking about filling the holes in your line. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Not any other kind. And just, if there's a hole in your line, just make sure you go and, and fill that hole, because that... This is not working. I can't keep a straight face right now. I'm sorry, my inner five-year-old is coming out, you know, like, 35 going on 12, except my body feels like it's 80 or something like that, right? That's that's the millennial problem, right? You, you're in your mid-30s, your body feels like it's ancient, and you're... You still have the maturity of a five-year-old. Or a 12-year-old. I guess five-year-olds, they, they're more like fart jokes or something. Pull my finger. I don't know. I don't have kids. So I'm probably wrong on that. I'm probably just remembering when I was a five-year-old. What is this? Uh, this, I... Oh, that's what I meant to do. I am building up a lot of muskets for dragoons. And it is something... Okay, you guys need to not let them charge you. So I... Wow, those were grenadiers too. You can see they have got the red hats. So I believe those are grenadiers. There's grenadiers over there. The British are bringing out, you know, some more elite troops than I'm used to, which is great. I think that is a good. That that that's difficulty, as opposed to. Sometimes these games, and I say sometimes, I mean all the time. Sometimes these games feel like difficulty is events that punish you instead of... I, I don't know. You, you guys probably know what I mean by the sabotage events and things like that. Sometimes it's more of just the, the enemy wants to screw you over more than it is actually, you know, playing, playing well. Okay, I want you guys to not shoot over there. All right, they are routing, so let's see what we can do in terms of capturing the enemy because the more captures, the better. Let's have you guys stop shooting. You guys need to stop shoot. Stop shoot? That's, once again, I am great at the English language. 
I am an absolute master. Never doubt my ability to uh, butcher a language. Um, I pretend to speak other languages, and once again, not well at all. I know a little bit of Mexican. I'm gonna say Mexican because uh, Mexican Spanish and Spanish are two completely different languages. Just ask anybody that speaks them. And over here in the United States, um, obviously Mexico is on our border, so that is more of the dialect that you speak, and there are some very, very different words. I've, I've talked to a, a, a native Spanish-speaking person before, so I should just say somebody from Spain, and I couldn't talk to them at all. And then I know a little, a little German. I know how to ask for the beer and how much it costs, which I believe is the most important part in life. We lost 208 men. That sounds good. It's probably wrong. We absolutely decimated them. Let's see if we can capture a bunch of them on the map. So I'll just attach like two units out of Portsmouth and see if I can run down the enemy. Maybe three. Maybe three. I'm feeling frisky. Let's do three. Okay, a little bit of micro. Let's see how this works out over here. See if we can capture anybody. You did not follow orders. There's one surrender. It would be great if we got another surrender. I would absolutely love that. I did uh, move some units uh, between pauses. All right. I don't think they are going to surrender. So that's all right. We got most of them. They're down to 252 men. Grabbed a bunch of brown besses. <laughs> I, I've seen on the Discord, like, people consider it, like, the gift. You know, the, the British invasions. Conflict of loyalties. Nine more officers. We will gladly take those. I did just recruit a... A cavalry regiment, Dragoons, so those will be added to our army in the future. I am moving troops across the map. Um, also, uh, I, this unit here, they have the African-American recruits, which for some reason have a lower wage than the regular troops. There's also been discourse on the Discord about that discourse on Discord. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, they should have the same wages as everybody else. That, that historically they had the same wages, so I don't know if that's some sort of misinformation by the developers, but they, they really should have the same. That was super quick, holy cow. I mean, I have tons of men in New Haven, so I guess I shouldn't be, you know, like absolutely blown away. Horse speed efficiency, stamina efficiency, willpower efficiency, I think. Oh man, stamina I, I feel like is important for the calves, so we'll do we'll do stat stamina and then grab those guys and bring them up to say what is going on over here? The British are just relentless on Portsmouth, except it's the wrong kind of relentless. They are not bringing enough men into these battles. I also I really hate that the British can stack up like that and I have no idea how many British there are. I think that's two regiments, but I would like them to play by the same rules as us. If we had two units like that, they would be drifting apart. Oh, that's three units. So there we go. We're actually starting to take some decent casualties here, just bleeding out. I mean, nothing like the British are taking. They've taken enough casualties where they're probably going to call for another invasion, but let's go ahead and fight this, and then this will probably be the end of this episode. You Bernie Sanders, once again I'm asking for more deployment zones, I think that'll just be the meme of the channel. Uh, I'm trying to group up men, trying to figure out where I want men. I'm also pushing our line up a little bit, uh, hopefully that works out, but it's, it's kind of a mess at the very beginning. I, I, another thing that would really help is just, you know, like spacing out the, the two armies. Uh, the British... I mean, you can see the British skirmishers are, like, right on top of us right away. Not not ideal. And, you know, we, we're not even in position yet. And we're trying to move five feet uh, across the battlefield. And we are we are completely out of position. So that's, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Let's actually put you guys behind over here. And then try and figure out this mess that we find ourselves in trying to move you guys out on this flank over here. Let's put you guys on hold, hold, hold. Lots of holding. And then probably mush, push you guys. Mush? Mush push. We're uh, Alaskan. 
right? Is that what they say for their their horse sleds? Mush? I'm probably so wrong on that. Alright, Quicksilver, get up. And they... Wow, they retreated already. That's interesting. And this is probably uh, partially to do with the, the whole deployment zone debacle. Really, when you think about it. I'm, I'm struggling to get my forces forward. They're... The British were able to, like, run across the battlefield immediately, so I'm out of position, and I would just, like, a little bit... Di no, 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 what did I... I pressed, pressed hold, not, not retreat. Okay, you guys need to shift over. You guys need to shift over. Let me draw, please. And then you guys... Oh, boy. Okay, we are screwing up royally because I am trying to maneuver my lines, and it is not happening. All right, center looks okay. These cannons look terrible. We are taking a lot of cannon casualties, unfortunately. And then over here, yeah, our, our men, we're starting to get pretty depleted. Um, so let's, let's move this big blob out over here. Cannons keep firing away. Over here, I mean, we're in the trees too. I don't know how much cover really matters in this game. It felt like in Ultimate General Civil War it mattered a lot. Pandacrat will tell you that it's like the same in these two games. My experience is different, um, so I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, it feels like it, it's also not as defined either. Like I, I have my cursor over the trees and nothing's really popping up. So I don't really know, like, do the trees actually provide cover or not? Would be would be great to know. I think things are finally stabilizing, and that's, uh, you know, like, we finally got our lines sorted out, and the battle's going to be over sooner rather than later. So it's just, like, those, those little things are what a lot of people talk about when it comes to the deployment zones. Like, by the time you have your forces figured out, the the battle's over at least that, that's how it feels um so that's just you know why we why we harp on things all the time i hope i don't come across as overly negative because i always hate videos that are overly negative i've, I've said this numerous times i absolutely love this game and the reason i talk about the features that i want because it's early access is because i want this game to be amazing i'm not gonna sit there and you know say like this is a Total War killer. It's not. It's a completely different game than Total War. It's... And then Total War has so many decades behind it. I mean, not necessarily that they know how to do anything with those decades. Uh, as it feels like they're going backwards. But there are just mechanics in Total War that are so far ahead of this game. Whereas this game has some nice, innovative mechanics that Total War doesn't have. So it would just be cool... Ah, oh, there's another wounded officer. It would just be cool if this game could figure out how to take, like, the things people love about Total War and improve upon them. Because this is such a cool time period to, to, do, to do a game about. There is almost nothing about the American Revolutionary War out there. So it's just so cool to see, see a time period like this. I mean, there's... You could argue that Empires from Total War is technically this time period, but that's a pretty loose argument to me. It's not directly about the American Revolution. These guys are getting their butts kicked, and I'm trying to figure out why. Sometimes units get their butts kicked, and I'm just like, so what was... Oh, there's the rear flank bug. Alright, we're going to get the rear flank bug guys out of here. And no, I forgot to report that bug last time. When I'm when I'm recording, it's just really hard to to report bugs. You guys need to fall back a little. You two need to fall back, and we just need all of you grab this line, do something like that. Then you're supported by the artillery more. We took a lot of artillery casualties in this battle. And then I would like you to move out over here. Somebody surrendered! Grab him! That's so always the thing. When they surrender, just spam spam them back to your line. 
these units are pretty large. Let's see, this battle is like kind of it's being a little the, the pacing is a little weird to me on this battle. There we go. There's what I want. So go go charge artillery. Go capture as much artillery as possible. You guys have captured over there. If we can grab you, push you out. I don't think they'll grab anybody, but you know, the more we can grab the better. No, stop it. Just, ch oh, they shattered. I wanted to capture them. That's my like toddler wine, right? But I wanted to do that. I don't think we'll capture anybody else. I don't know if there's any more artillery out there. Doesn't really look like it. I think there was only two artillery, so. That is that battle. 221 losses. As I said, we're starting to get to the point where Portsmouth is, um... I might need to move some units around. I, I need a larger reserve in the Boston, Boston-Salem area. And I'm trying. Um, we just, we, oh, well, we've got a bunch of officers now. I was going to say we have an officer shortage and it just seems like um, that's that's kind of our problem here. So let's leave the garrison with you two. See if you can charge in. Let's actually have one more. So that's, let's have all of you charge over here. And the next time we we are on the, the battlefield, hopefully we can hopefully we can push up and take Burlington. That would be great. So there's one surrender. I don't know. We probably won't get another surrender. Let's just grab all of these supplies. So I think that'll be it for today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoy a little bit of, uh, well, I mean, I guess it was the same. It was still, you know, the battle of Portsmouth over and over and over again. But with, uh, with summer comes a better, an easier way for me to attack the enemy without taking massive amounts of desertion the free artisans of massachusetts have been the mvps of funding us they have given us so much money during this entire thing i probably need to turn my intelligence down uh this is just crushing us at the moment um absolutely crushing us and you know I, i'll turn it down to level one and then we'll lose everybody because that's how it goes but that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe. All of that YouTube jazz greatly helps out the channel. I really appreciate everybody that watches the videos. And I really appreciate any time you smash that like button. And I absolutely love reading your comments. Views are a little bit down. I am supposing that's because winter is a little bit more boring. And, you know, the campaign is past that uh, 10 episode threshold that seems to... You know, uh, YouTube viewers seem to kind of lose interest after a little while, but hopefully with the New York theater opening up soon, we can we can make this more interesting with summer. So hopefully in the future, it's a, it's a little bit more enjoyable for you guys. Um, as always, though, until next time.